Precast concrete manufacturers formulate and produce consistently high strength concrete mixes under stringent quality controls. They cast and cure their products in a controlled environment, all under the scrutiny of the Pre-Stressed Concrete Institute's plant certification program. Problems that arise with other systems, such as curling, surface strength loss, and inadequate air entrainment are eliminated. Pre-stressing the panels in the plant significantly improves performance by inducing compressive stresses in the concrete panels. This effectively prevents cracking. This durability not only slashes maintenance costs over the life of the roadway, but significantly cuts user costs through the reduction of repair cycles. We believe that if this is constructed properly, that the design life of, of this section will far exceed the 35 years or the 45 years that the original pavement was able to, uh, uh, to survive out there. So uh, we may well see everything else falling apart around it and needing complete uh, replacement long before we need to do anything to this piece of, of pavement. Pre-stressing also provides significantly thinner slab sections. The pre-stressing reduces or even eliminates tensile stresses in the slab, allowing thinner sections to accommodate the same traffic loading. Completed projects in both Texas and California have used sections that were as thin as 8 and 10 inches respectively. These precast, pre-stressed sections can be designed to have a fatigue life equivalent to a 14 inch thick conventional cast in place concrete pavement. The thinner sections require less material, which saves costs. They're lighter, allowing easier handling. Being thinner, they can also provide greater clearances beneath underpasses. The thinner slabs also allow in-kind replacement. That means an existing 8-inch pavement can be replaced with an 8-inch precast panel that provides a design life equivalent to a much thicker pavement. By casting and curing the panels in the plant, they are not as susceptible to variable on-site environmental conditions necessary for cast-in-place projects to succeed. So, paving projects can continue even under adverse conditions, extending the construction season. Best of all, the concept uses standard materials and construction techniques that engineers and precasters work with every day. The materials are simply used for applications that are new, exciting, and highly beneficial. We've got to remove the fear from, and the risk uh, from using this product. To do that, I think we have to pull together you know, good information that teaches people how to do it properly, and that's very important. If we, if we don't pull that information together, it's not going to happen. The reason that state departments of transportation are going to select and specify pre-stressed, pre-cast concrete paving applications is because they have traffic situations that demand and justify that increased initial cost. And the cost is going to be justified on the basis of reduced lane closure time and longer life pavement. Judging true costs is difficult in the prototype stage as the projects are small and the learning curve has an expense. Costs are higher as processes are tried for the first time. But everyone agrees that the somewhat higher initial cost will decrease quickly and the true value of this system will be seen in the decreased life cycle benefits. Based on two already completed projects, officials at the Federal Highway Administration see great potential for this system. The Federal Highway Administration has been very pleased with the response of the states to the first uh, five implementation projects that are now either completed or underway. And our reaction to that is to, uh, has been to provide additional funding for perhaps up to 10 additional state demonstration projects that we believe will continue this uh, application success through the next four year period. The first project took place in Georgetown, Texas in 2001. It involved installing approximately 2,300 lineal feet of frontage road pavement along Interstate 35. The panels were approximately 36 feet wide, 10 feet long, and 8 inches thick. Prior to installing the panels, a 2-inch asphalt leveling course was placed. This was followed by the polyethylene sheet as the panels were lowered into place, epoxy was applied to the shear keys to provide a watertight seal. 
Once in place, the panels were mated to ensure a smooth surface. The panels were then snugged together, and at this point they can be driven over by traffic. This capability allows one section to be placed one night while another section is post-tensioned. This greatly expands the amount of roadway that can be completed in a short amount of time while taking no lanes out of use during the day. Once each section of panels was installed, strands were fed through the central stressing pockets in opposite directions. After the strands were anchored, they were tensioned from the central stressing pocket. Once the tensioning was completed, the pockets were patched. Following the completion of the Texas project, another project was designed and installed in El Monte, California. This project featured a two-lane and shoulder addition to Interstate 10 between Meeker on the east and Tyler on the west. It was completed in April 2004. Although it followed the concept created in the Texas project, several key improvements were made. First, the panels were set on a lean concrete base at the site. To enhance the weather-tight fit of the panels, foam gaskets were installed around the strand ducts in each panel. Also, the strands were epoxy-coated and pre-cut to the approximate length to provide faster installation and even more corrosion protection. Perhaps the biggest change was the use of variable thickness precast panels, which accommodated a change in pavement cross slope between the traffic lanes and the shoulder. This further demonstrates the flexibility of the concept. Installation of the precast pre-stressed panels was also limited to nighttime construction between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Finally, the pavement surface was diamond ground in some areas. This was done to meet pavement smoothness specifications set by Caltrans, even though the original surface was smooth enough to be used for traffic. These adaptations show the flexibility that the system provides, even within this one type of use. But the full extent of the ways that precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement panels can be used in highway and related projects have yet to it be does realized. It take time to prepare specifications, drawings, and to educate the DOTs and contractors with regard to what's necessary to build one of these projects. But we think that within the next four-year time window, it's going to begin to uh, take off on its own. All of these uses for precast panels create benefits that include speed and the ability to keep lanes open during the day, even during construction periods. Durability that allows roadways to handle heavier truck loads and more traffic volume throughout a longer service life. Thinner slabs that provide more durability for in-kind replacements and greater clearances. A longer construction season. The use of existing materials and technologies and the highly controlled quality of precast concrete to create a long life concrete pavement requiring minimal repair cycles. These benefits create long term cost savings due to lower maintenance costs for labor and material, safer working conditions and fewer lost hours of user time. I don't think there's any limitation on the uses for precast panels uh, anywhere where someone would consider using uh, cast in place concrete. Quite honestly, it's a win-win. It's a win for the producers. It's a win for the public because they're going to get the best roads that there are. They're going to get it for the, the most economical long-term costs and they're going to have the benefit of not sitting in traffic like you would with any other system. For more information on precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement panels, contact any of these agencies or companies. Their contact information is provided on the label accompanying this presentation.